But do you also think that we should also be careful to handle the matter in a way that it doesn't, we don't further embarrass ourselves? I mean, we're looking at the papers here, we're beginning to see uh, stories, reps divided. It's, it's causing a furore, and people are wondering, is the furore in the House of Representatives really necessary? A lot of people don't even think that you are going to rise above this. Did you hear me, Honorable? I didn't hear you. Well, I was saying that, do you, don't you think that we should go about this in a, ma in a manner that doesn't bring us further embarrassment? We're looking at the happenings in the House of Representatives, and a lot of people are beginning to wonder what exactly is happening in the House. Why can't lawmakers rise above this? It's been, it's been almost done and dusted in the Senate. They have about it in a manner. Uh, they're handling it, at least they're investigating it, and it's not taking the front pages. Why is the House of Reps different? Well, uh, I, I, I can't answer that because, um, like I told you, um, un unless you agree that we didn't actually need to discuss it and Reps do not need to even table it at all. Uh, the issue of bribery that came up yesterday, which we have alluded to, uh, is already being uh, handled by the Committee on Ethics and Privileges. Uh, issues like this come up, they are part and parcel of the processes of uh, parliamentary democracy. Uh, there, must, there must be actions and there must be reactions. It is unfortunate that it is happening this way, but I believe that uh, uh, no right-thinking person uh, representing his people and representing our country uh, will sit back and uh, refuse to contribute to a national discourse, which has greatly uh, threw up a number of issues uh, regarding our image in the international community. Uh, especially as we have been perceived as a corrupt nation. So it's unfortunate that is happening, but that is the situation. And I think uh, we have gone past some, most of these things in the past, and this one will not be different. I mean, what one wonders, I mean, uh, because you've handled uh, some other thorny matters, but in an executive session. Would it have been out of place if you had maybe called for an executive session to look at this matter, so that at least you look at it before you then come to the uh, plenary. Chamberlain, you're absolutely right. Um, uh, uh, Chamberlain, you, you're absolutely right. That would have been one of the ways to handle the matter. But for the mindset of uh, a majority of our members on the other side who believe that the matter should not be discussed at all, and I think that is the bone of contention. That is why you are seeing what you are seeing. Uh, it was fed by a majority of our members on the other side that the matter ought not to be debated or talked about in the House of Reps. And uh, you, you, can't, you can't gag a people and expect them not to ventilate their opinions on issues as bony as this. What Executive session think, perhaps have solved this matter. Is this linked in any way for you to, to the 2015 elections? Because a lot of people are saying that uh, right now you, you've already reached a conclusion, it will seem. You say that it's an opinion that you've given. But then it, it would seem that you already set your mind at a bias towards a free and fair investigation of the matter. Did you hear me, Honorable? Yeah, I heard the first part of. Uh, yeah, the I was saying that with, with the opinion that, uh, that you've given, do you think that you know you, you are not already having a bias? Can you say that you're not already having a bias towards an investigation of the matter within the House of Representatives? Of course, the matter is no longer before the House of Representatives for investigation. So we await the Senate um, investigation on the matter and how the matter is finally resolved between Nigeria and South Africa. But like I told you. Um, the only difference is that we are members of parliament, and the opinion we have given is based on the facts that we have before us, and of course the, 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 the investigations going on uh, in South Africa, and the circumstances under which we had to make uh, that opinion known to the public. And I believe that a number of commentators have also said that uh, there was a possibility of uh, money laundry uh, being involved and so on and so forth. So I, I do not think that our opinion on the matter is final. I, I hope and I pray that uh, we are able to redeem the image of our country uh, at the, in the final analysis of this matter. But you agree with me that there is nothing legal, there is nothing ethical 
in a country such as ours, moving large sums of money into another country to breach his own, to breach the laws of those countries. Especially when even us as a country, uh, we are experiencing or we are witnessing and promoting a cashless policy. Well, I, it's been all over the papers that uh, the United States is trying to block Nigeria's purchase of arms uh, to equip us in the fights for the insurgency. Uh, have you heard about that and what's your opinion on that? Well, well, well I, I believe that with high-level diplomatic talks and uh, engagement, uh, that shouldn't be. And, and I believe that uh, the United States will have no reason to do such if uh, we, we engage them for their support in a, in a, in a, in a better manner. Because uh, the, 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 the surgency in Nigeria is not only affecting Nigeria as a country. It's, it's, a, it's a global threat you know, of terrorism that has continued to ravage my kind. Uh, I, I believe it's a matter, the, the president of Nigeria have had opportunity to engage the American president on a number of occasions. These are issues that can be resolved. Of course, it was only, it was only recently that we were told that there is a legislation that is impeding uh, 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 our purchase of arms and access to equipments uh, in the United States and some other allied countries to the United States. And this one requires some diplomatic, uh, legislative diplomacy, which was part of a resolution that we passed when we came in last, uh, last week, that we need to engage the U.S. Congress at the level of the House of Reps to see how such legislation can be vacated. So the point I'm trying to make is that, on the whole, uh, governance is not a matter for one hand of government. There must be this cooperation and synergy in order for us to remove all bottlenecks that are likely to affect the policies of government that we are pursuing. So I, I think that uh, those issues are resolvable with the United States. Okay, tell us uh, before we wrap up, I mean, uh, there, there are reports that the House of Reps did pass this Nigerian Financial Intelligence Center bill. What is that about and what do we seek to achieve with that? Well, I, I think that was passed yesterday. Um, I, I think it was to, it, it's all intended uh, to ensure that our rating in terms of anti-corruption anti uh, uh, crusade, anti-corruption fight uh, is boosted in the international uh, sphere uh, by situating the Nigerian Financial Intelligence uh, Center uh, outside the uh, Economic and Financial Crisis Commission uh, 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 purview, because as it is before the bill was passed, uh, the EFCC uh, oversees that unit. And uh, the, the global trend in anti-corruption fight is to situate this intelligence unit to collate, analyze, and uh, uh, put together all uh, intelligence information regarding transactions uh, in the international and domestic scene. Uh, out of the purview of anti-corruption agencies so that they can maintain some level of independence. And, well, and Churchill wants to know, he sends this question via Twitter. He says, uh, what's happening to the cases of uh, Farouk Lawan and the likes of Herman Hainbe? All those matters were involved. Uh, they spoke about it in the House, and all of a sudden, it, it looks as though it has fizzled out. They haven't fizzled out. Uh, you should know that those matters are not within... Uh, the immediate purview of the House of Representatives. They are before the court. Uh, uh, the the Farouk Lawa case is still ongoing in the, in the court of the land. Uh, I think the Henry Herman case uh, went on appeal, and then uh, the, the judge has given judgment uh, in favor of Honorable Henry Herman, uh, discharging him of any culpability. So they are not matters within our purview any longer. They were raised, and we took our positions on those matters and ask that the, the law should take its course, that they should face trial. They are facing trial, and I think the matter is before the court. So we cannot intervene, and we have no role to play any longer. As far as those cases are concerned, the House of Representatives is fund to official. It cannot exercise the powers of the court to determine their culpability in, or otherwise uh, in those cases anymore. So let him be informed that the matters are in court, and one of them has been struck off at the, high, at the Court of Appeal. All right, uh, Honorable Samson Osage, thank you for speaking with us today on Sunrise Daily. Thank you, Chamberlain.